Um, anyway, so uh, did a little bit of that. And then uh, I uh, I jumped on the uh, Level Clear podcast, actually, uh, with uh, Don Pedro and Tuff and the crew and Ellie. Um, had a good time. Those dweebs. Mm-hmm. Uh, that should be coming out a little bit later this week. Uh, had a fun discussion. Uh, but uh, Don reminded me, actually, that there was a game I, I bought that I wanted to to jump into. And I just, I'd been waiting and I, and, and, I, and I eventually, like, I'm like, yeah, fuck it. Let me boot this up and go in. So last night, I spent a couple hours going through something called Fights in Tight Spaces. Oh, I played that last night as well. I forgot to talk about it. Fights in Tight Spaces is super cool. Uh, I don't like it. I enjoy it a lot. And it has a lot of uh, the things that are uh, my 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 hallmarks, I would say. So here's one thing about it. For starters, the aesthetic uh, is you're a silhouetted spy it's wearing a hot. suit. Uh, it's literally super hot. It's more, it's no, no, because you see details of, of their clothing on them. It's different. And uh, that is not only spoke to me but there's a little part of me that had a little like <clears throat> because it is very similar to oh, no. one of my discarded ideas for hypothetical uh, games that'll never ex exist too late. that's fine yeah too fuck late. it i'm Somebody i'm made not it first. i'm not that guy i'm not i don't live in the reality where i'm making my games but the silhouette on its own is one thing, but you there's a very important distinction between a plain super hot silhouette and one where certain articles of clothing are highlighted on the figure and certain details mm -hmm. of the of the clothing and the shapes of their head and their hair and things like that they're wearing can be seen. Very mm -hmm. important significance there. Um, very stylish and cool. Uh, the game itself is what it describes. It is, it is a generally about a four by four grid is, is the average stage. You are playing... Yeah, they're pretty fucking small. Tight spaces. You're playing as a, a uh, spy who is surrounded by a bunch of people. And you basically are using cards and turn-based uh, movement and gameplay to do the hallway fight scene from Old Boy. So... Uh, if you've mm -hmm. seen the original Old Boy, fuck the 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 the, the, the remake, um, you got that halt that tight ass hallway fight scene where you've got to slam people into walls, leap over tables, and reposition and slip between two people, let them hit each other. All that stuff is uh, what you're kind of doing here. It's it, it's uh, there's a prologue that you can go up through the first stage uh, for fights in tight spaces, and then there's a, an early access version of the full game. Um, I spent most of my time playing the prologue, um, which is good enough to get a feel for what this is going to be. And so you basically, uh, you get a mission, you know, and then you go out to do it. And then, yeah, you get dropped onto this grid. Uh, so you'll get a deck of cards and each card is a movement action. Some of them are attacks. Some of them are, um, just steps or like repositioning. Uh, some of them are buffs and some of them are, um options where you can do one or another you can attack or move for example right mm -hmm. so you get the shuffled set of cards and then you, you you pick your movements uh the opponents are going to do the same type of things you see in uh into the breach or it's uh, that it was it leaped out at me when i was playing it i'm like oh man this is just like into the breach into the breach or um uh any other game where you have perfect information of mm -hmm. what the attack is going to be. So then you are now solving the puzzle, right? Um, Bumbo as well uh, comes to mind. And uh, I'm a humongous fan of like those turn-based perfect information puzzle style games. You know, I like, I just, they, they, they're there to me. That's relaxing and fun, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So you play your cards and then uh, you have, for example, someone with a gun that's going to shoot you as long as you're in their line of sight. And then you have another dude who's going to swing his fist at you and, and, and kick you a block down or whatever. So why don't you just grab the dude who's going to kick you and throw him in front of the dude who's going to shoot you and then exactly. he'll shoot his butt. Exactly, right? And then uh, that might cause a, another chain reaction because 
um, you can then step into the line of action of someone who will automatically have an attack or like you can mm -hmm. down dudes, you can block people. Like emerging uh, uh, Vec in, in Into the Breach, emerging enemies is a similar thing here where new enemies are dropping into the into the grid. You can block them for a moment and delay their, their turn. It it was kind of wild to me like the into the breaches information display is on is there but then also go stand on the spot the dude's going to show up in is also there mm -hmm. from into the breach uh there's some really cool like um usage of these attacks too where depending on the direction you're facing like there's there's versions of attacks that are like rear facing like the uh a kick backwards or a kick forward or a kick to the left or right to create a kind of a dynamic look to the fight and uh, or like slamming someone's head contextually into a nearby object. So if you have a wall splat, for example, um, if there's a wall behind them, they'll get you'll grab them by the head and slam them into it. But if there's a table, you'll hit them into the table. If there's another object, you'll hit, and they'll interact with that. There's a little bit of a punch laser system there. Um, and sometimes if there's, let's say, an open window or a door, you can kick someone out of and reposition them or shove them. They'll go flying out of that and that person's dead, you know? So again, similar to into the breach, lava pit holes or like hazards and things like that, you know? Um, mm -hmm. What's really great too is uh, once the fight is done. Oh, also as you play actions, you build up a combo meter and uh, your the number of actions you can do is determined by your momentum meter. So you have, you have combo and you have momentum. Momentum goes yeah, down. Remember, combo finisher, uh, combo finisher needed like three momentum. Exactly. So some of the big, like, there's a big roundhouse kick that you can do that requires you to do three uh, actions first. So you start a combo, you hit three people, and then when you're at at least three hits of the combo, you do a big roundhouse kick, and it'll knock the guy one block to the left into the sight of the gunshot, so that you know, mm -hmm. boom, you hit him over, he gets shot, you know, and then you keep moving. Uh, and then it does something else that I really love that um, I also want to see more games do. And I talked about this when I was talking about... Um, oof, uh, the name of the game escapes me right now. But it's a real-time game that like you pause time to do your fights. Almost like the way FF7 Remake handles the fights where you uh -huh. can ATB a little bit. It's, it was a mecha version. Any more details? I could probably look it up. Mecha version of that. Um, oh, I remember that. You were um, in a city. You had like three or four point? units. Uh, Phantom called? Brigade. Phantom, Phantom Brigade? Brigade. There it is. That's the one, right? I love, 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 love that type of stuff. So in this, um, once the action is done, this card game you're playing, you get to replay the fight with all the cards and HUD removed and see it play out as a sequence. And it's like, you know... That should be automatic. I don't... I, I, I you, yeah, it should like be. 100%. I agree. My <laughs> One of my things was, once the mission's done, the replay should automatically start playing. Don't even let me select it. Yeah. Just let me watch it. Um, agreed. Yeah. Rad. Of, of, the one, of, of one of the only things they didn't steal from Superhot. I don't mean that pejoratively. I mean, it's, it's clearly Into the Breach Superhot. Which is a cool combination. Uh, it should fucking play automatically. Mm -hmm. It's it's like going to. It's so silly, but like going to hit the replay button myself just takes some of the magic out of it. Yeah, I want to just see what I did and 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 show me it in a cinematic, cool fight. You know, like like camera because like you get some dynamic angles when you're replaying it and stuff. Um, you do definitely end up with super hot moments in terms of like you're surrounded by a group. How the fuck do you get out? You know. Uh, you do end up with that energy in a turn-based card system. Uh, and then in between missions, there's events. Uh, you can go to the gym to like level up your cards. You can go to the hospital to heal up your body. Or you can do an event that's kind of like... Um, almost like events in uh, Road Trip to Canada. Death, death, mm -hmm. death Road to Canada. Where death it's Road like, to Canada. Yeah. Where it'll be like, oh, uh, you suddenly... Woke up, you, you and found yourself like in a hostage situation. What do you do to escape? Do you pick a fight? Do you give up info? Do you do this or that? And like whatever answer you pick will have a different percentage chance of a a, a reward or not, or you know, or even like um, Curio in in Darkest Dungeon. You know, different little scenarios happen that'll you know buff you up or or, or you know debuff you, um, and then you make your way towards the end. 
and usually there'll be like a, it seems like there's like a boss and then you'll have your best cards ideally will be able to handle you know like the the waves of enemies coming at you and stuff so um yeah i thought it was really cool really cleanly executed fun concept uh it's an early access and um you know there's definitely like uh, a little bit they can do to tighten up like in particular the um you can play with you play with a mouse or you can play with a gamepad when you play with a gamepad it's it's not fully implemented just yet like it does work fine but there's some menus that just like you have to switch back to the mouse for and things like that so yeah it's so early. the main reason i didn't like it uh there's a minor control foible i didn't like that like i wanted the ability to hit like space bar or something to end my turn like it's a little too mouse focused and not mouse and keyboard focused. I was on game. I felt like it was okay. Uh, and yeah, I didn't even bother with the gamepad Cause I knew there was only like partially supported. Um, I don't know, man, the enter the breach, like perfect information system is really cool, but I don't like that combined with random cards. Uh, yes, yes. This is so that was my first, that was a thing that initially I was um, uh, 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 concerned about too because I was like, I don't have access to all of my moves. What if the move mm -hmm. I need for this turn, like if I deliberately let myself get surrounded and then the next turn I don't have a card that lets me slip past enemies, I'm fucked, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I, that, is, that is absolutely a thing. And I think that... Um, like when you do the tutorial, it has kind of moments where it's like there'll be times when it when you might be forced to take damage, use your block to mitigate and things like that. And I'm like, but if I'm doing this perfectly, I should be able to not get touched, you know, ideally, because that's how it looks in Enter the Breach, especially when you when you do a flawless run. And I want to be able to do that here. I think, and I'm not a hundred percent. I have to like test and confirm, but I think the solution in some ways to that is when you end your turn still holding unused cards they don't go into the discard pile they go mm -hmm. i think they shuffle back into the next pull so um as you work through let's say your deck has about 20 cards in it or 15 it's not a huge deck mm -hmm. um you the ones you spend go into discard and everything else you have another chance of pulling them again so if you're particularly looking for a certain play you might want to save it and only spend that which you're willing to lose until you get through everything, and then they reshuffle the whole deck again. So you get a li mm -hmm. you get some control over what actions you want to preserve at what point during the fight. I, I believe, um, but yes, it's not quite the same as Into the Breach where you have full control at uh, on each turn. It's weird because like uh, I played Slay the Spire, which is like deck building but also all the encounters are randomized and you don't have perfect information. Mm -hmm. And I found that, I find that I, I had no issue with that. And I don't know why that is. Like, I don't know what, the, like, hmm. I guess it's, it's like the idea of like having random enemies, random stuff, and then random like uh, things come up in uh, Slay of the Spire. Like I'm doing the best I, I can here. Right. Mm -hmm. But when I have, uh, fight in tight spaces and like I know that I have a card that would perfectly solve this perfect solution mm -hmm. but I just don't have it right now mm -hmm. it's fucking it drove me crazy like I, I had a situation where all I wanted to do is throw a guy one space to the left mm -hmm. and I was like oh man that would have been awesome but I couldn't I didn't have any cards that did it and so I was like muddling through and taking hits that I feel like if I had access to all my stuff I could have ace this encounter perfectly so you do get to customize your deck as well uh between yeah. matches uh and and uh you know as you're leveling up you can go in and discard any cards that are like things you don't want a chance of drawing um yeah that's very can, similar to slave aspire yeah or you can increase your chances of of pulling you know something that you do want um and something that i thought was really really uh clever I don't know if this was done elsewhere first, but um, there's a tax, for example, like there's someone that swings like a pipe. And if you uh, block all of the pipe damage, like you use a block card and it gives you block, it gives you like armor for the next turn and you absorb all of that. Right. If you have enough to absorb all the damage, then you're good. 
it's like nothing happened. You continue playing as yep. normal. But if you did not have enough armor and it like let's say it does eight damage, you had six armor and it does two uh, health to, uh, against you, you also take an injury card. And now one of your cards in your deck is wasted being an injury card that you can't play. This is really similar to Slay the Spire. You should check out Slay the Spire. Okay. Okay. So then uh, you have a slot fact, that you can't use because you have a bum leg or whatever. Yeah, straight up. Mm -hmm. uh, do, do you have uh, an Android phone? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, no, I have an iPhone. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm pretty sure Slay the Spire is out on, Steam on too, the iPhone. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I just I know that Slay, Slay the Spire always like when I was playing it on the on the PC, I was mm -hmm. like, man, kind of just wish I had this on my phone. Fair enough. And sure enough, I'd like it's Into the Breach might be the biggest wasted potential of a phone game I have ever seen. <laughs> I am baffled that never came to phones. Not too sure. Not too sure why. Uh, it it would have been with a decent ability to zoom in and select the tiles easily yes agreed uh it's on Baffled. switch it's on switch but that's about it uh I but um it's in my pocket mm -hmm. uh but th again I, I do say though that uh so slay the spy uh, slay the spire from what i know though kind of emulates an rpg battle yeah right um and yeah that to me is a is a different genre from perfect information puzzle oh no the, this like there are way more similarities than differences okay like because the mechanics of the actual deck are, are seem identical so it seems a bit more like uh because dark that sounds a bit more like darkest dungeon in a way because i love darkest dungeon as well uh but darkest dungeon you don't know what the enemy is about to do but you know what their move set is and it's going to be one of a couple things and you know when their turn is so you generally you know what like you said, you do your best. You know what? Slay the Spire does have perfect information. It, the enemies tell you what they're going to do on their turn before they do them. Oh, interesting. Okay, cool. Cool, all right. Um, so, yeah, it actually is, like, mm -hmm. like, really similar. So then the only thing we're talking about here is just the RPG battle system of your characters versus the, grid. the enemy characters versus a grid of yeah. positioning yeah yeah okay so you know still different to have a grid or not a grid but i, I either way but like i said i love darkest dungeon and i uh, and uh that that that's a different type of thing but it still is super mm -hmm. cool um yeah uh, 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 uh I'll, I'll take a look but the the things i love about this in particular are just like yeah this line behind me is a, a bullet is about to whiz by my head and in front of me a big heavy is about to do a zangief lariat how do i shove the guy into into range so that you know or shove the boss into range so that he gets hit back by the lariat and then shot in the back and then i set oh, that's up easy that, you offer him a treat sure uh you can also do uh, your little get it and get them to walk two spaces towards you Anyway, but uh, yeah, you. Uh, uh, so I was able to set up some fun little plays like that, where I, uh, you know, I knock a guy in the in in the way of another dude who shoves him forward, and then he gets shot in the head or some shit, um, or vaulting yeah, over a cool. table. Um, it's 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 a stylish version of you know that genre and those things that I like, and uh, I, I need to see what kind of like high level cards they're they're gonna they're gonna roll out, but. At bare minimum, you're getting these kind of like tech end move cards, you know, like a little mm -hmm. like back elbow, a little quick fist, a step that punches from two two uh, tiles away, and little things like that. And you, but you also, if your deck is balanced enough, have enough like movement cards plus an emergency movement card, which I thought is pretty cool. There's a there's a card that can be like you'll hold it'll always take a slot in your deck, and it will um, be an, a movement that you can use and then discard once. And I think uh, that is kind of like almost like the undo button in in uh, into the breach, where if you fuck up, you can just take a step out of the way of whatever you did for zero cost, but you only get one per match. You know? Yeah. Um, fights in tight spaces. Uh, 
take a look. The yeah, prologue it seems cool. is, the prologue is free, and then the the full version is uh, early access. Yeah. I just wish I don't know. There's something about it that I I felt. How do I put it? Maybe it's because of the positioning, but I felt consistently frustrated that I did not have the moves that I wanted. Yeah, uh, Maybe that could, was um, bad luck. Customize your deck. Put put the cards you want more often. Delete the cards you end up never using, and then use mm -hmm. your money to upgrade your favorite cards so that they are free to use. Oh man, this is just this is just slow aspire. Or even <laughs> I did not. Oh, I didn't get far enough to see the upgrade uh, card mechanic. Yeah, upgrade them so that they're either free to use or so that they keep your momentum uh, or your your uh, combo meter going when you use them. Because like every time you attack, you build a combo meter. Uh, but if you move instead of attack, you lose a little bit of combo. So you can upgrade cards to maintain them and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, it could be done. I'm sh there's a version of this game that is just a like list of of actions like an FF uh, like a like a Final Fantasy battle menu. You know mm -hmm. that would play out a lot differently. Um, I I I think the card the card game is in there to kind of like allow for like a, a a a lot of customization to the type of character that you know you can play as. But like yeah. it would have worked either way. It, it, it could have gone either way on it. Um. So yeah, that's tight tights and fight spaces. <laughs> that's that's different. No, that's wrestling. That's a whole different thing. Yes, exactly. Um. That's shitty explosions not going off at AEW. Whoops. Pyro, so. pyro failures is always just... Oh, it's so good. <laughs> I mean, shout outs to, you know, JR and the professionals for trying to keep the storyline elements of it going. But uh, it was that was a really fun... Check that out if you haven't seen it. A little clip of there was an AEW event where they planned for an exploding ring. And then a couple of fizzy light fireworks went off, you know. And then the dude in the ring, like, they literally go, like, man, Kenny Omega is one of the greatest of all time, but he makes a shitty exploding ring. <laughs> and uh, then someone posted, like, eh, for comparison, here's a New Japan exploding ring, and it fucking yeah. looks like a fire hazard. <laughs> like, it the whole arena... Is. Fills up with smoke. Insane. Insane. Um, anyway, yeah. Uh, Fights in Tight Spaces uh, is the name of it. 